the White House targets Planned Parenthood in the 2019 fiscal budget released this week. President Donald Trump sent Congress a proposal to spend $4.4 trillion in the 2019 budget year beginning in October. The proposal, largely political, would prohibit health and human services funding from going to any clinic or facility that provides abortions. This is seen as a move to defund Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion provider. Joining us now from Capitol Hill is Senator Steve Daines of Montana. Senator, what do you make of the president's budget proposal to cut off funding to abortion providers? And how seriously do you expect Congress will consider it? Well, I was uh, very pleased to see that President Trump zeroed out. He defunded Planned Parenthood. They're the largest abortion provider in the United States. Over 300,000 babies lose their lives every year because of Planned Parenthood. I hope that Congress takes a serious look at that. I fully support the president. I'd like to see Planned Parenthood defunded, and we'll keep fighting uh, for that as long as I'm up here. It's been over a year in this administration with the pro-life Congress. Does defunding Planned Parenthood remain a top priority? It does, uh, and you really see a, a difference in the Republicans' view on that versus uh, the Democrats. The Republicans uh, are pretty unified that we should defund Planned Parenthood, the largest abortion provider in the United States, 328,000 babies a year. Uh, it is time to defund it. Uh, we need to get some of our friends across the aisle to support us in that effort, and again, anything your, your viewers can do to help us move some of our Democratic colleagues to support our efforts to defund Planned Parenthood once and for all. Absolutely. And in other pro-life news, Senator, you introduced a bill just this week, the Child Tax Credit for Pregnant Moms Act. What's the difference between your legislation and the existing child tax credit? Well, I think that pregnant mothers deserve a break. And you look at the cost of, of raising a child, it's over $200,000. A lot of those costs start to be uh, borne by the the, the mom uh, before the baby is born. And so this gives us a chance to add another $2,000 uh, for a tax credit for that unborn child. I think it makes sense. Uh, pregnant moms need a break, and that's why I've introduced this legislation, and uh, we're starting to see some good support behind it. That's great to hear. You know, between the budget proposal and now, Senator, your child tax credit bill, how do you see money really playing a role in advancing the pro-life cause? Well, I, I think, again, uh, whether it's defunding Planned Parenthood, whether it's providing a tax credit for uh, the unborn child, or pay, passing the Paying Capable Act, these are all the fights that we're taking in Capitol Hill every day. I got to tell you, I'm disappointed we didn't see more support for a very important bill, and that was the Paying Capable, which would stop abortions uh, at 20 weeks or greater. We should stop all abortions. But a good place to start to get bipartisan support would be stopping late-term abortions at 20 weeks. Ago. That's five months. Uh, we ought to be able to get at least 60 votes in the U.S. Senate. Unfortunately, many of my Democratic colleagues, most of them, voted against it. Again, we need the people of our country to yell loudly mm. at their leaders in Washington. It's time to pass the paying capable bill. Absolutely. Senator Steve Daines of Montana, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Good to be with you. For further reaction and analysis, we're joined now by our trusted pro-life expert. Autumn Christensen is the policy director for the Susan B. Anthony List. She was previously the director of the Congressional Pro-Life Caucus in the House of Representatives for over a decade. Welcome back, Autumn. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. What do you make of this White House budget proposal? Is this a path forward to defunding Planned Parenthood? Sure. So this administration, uh, when the president was a candidate, made a commitment that he would cut off funding to Planned Parenthood, and this is really a good step towards reaching that, that goal. Do you think Congress uh, will take these suggestions seriously? Yes. Well, you know, it's it's this ongoing challenge. The House has, has consistently included language to cut off funding to the largest abortion provider, Planned Parenthood, but they just keep running up against that supermajority requirement in the Senate for spending bills and that's likely to be what happens again this go round. Um, we certainly will be working to try to convince senators otherwise but that tends to be the challenge. And see what happens. The proposal would prohibit HHS department funding from going to abortion providers. What 
other pro-life strides have we seen come from HHS so far? Right, so in, in despite of the difficulties on Capitol Hill, we've been really pleased to see that this administration has taken every step that they can to try to, t uh, to cut off that funding through administrative means. So one example of that is rescinding an Obama-era regulation mm -hmm. that would have um, it told all states to cut that they couldn't cut Planned Parenthood out of their Medicaid program. And mm -hmm. this administration said, you know, we're going to pull back that guidance and we're going to tell you, you make that choice. So even though at the federal level we haven't defunded Planned Parenthood, this is at the state level, mm -hmm. states can do this. Exactly, offering more flexibility to states. You know, it's been a little over a year now that the Trump administration has been in office. How have pro-lifers working at various levels in the government, how have they been treated and received? Well, you know, it's so important that each president, as they come in, appoints people to represent their policy goals within their administration. Mm -hmm. And we have seen, especially in this week and in the past couple of weeks, this uh, really huge attack on pro-life staffers within the administration. Mm -hmm. So even to the extent of it looking like some pro-abortion members of Congress want to disqualify pro-life people from government service and public service, which would be a real tragedy. We need people who respect life working within the administration, and that respect for life will translate to good work in many, many areas. Absolutely, and pro-lifers cannot be discriminated against at right. in any, in any level. Adam Christensen of the Susan B. Anthony List, thank you for your insight on all of this. Thank you. It's good to be here.